Right. Welcome everybody to the Monday, July 31st uh, meeting of the Conway Select Board, which may become a joint meeting with the Finance Committee. <laughs> if they get one more person besides Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Call the meeting to order. First item, vote to approve the minutes of July 17th. We do, have, we do have one correction to the minutes of July 16th instead of... 17. 17, sorry, instead of 161. Um, so what the motion could read is to approve a pole being erected on Thompson Road pending the assignment of a new number by the assessors. It turns out to have been 81. So I'll, I'll make that motion and... Uh, Second. All in favor? I have to abstain as I was an absent. You can still make a you can still oh, you can't. Fine. All right. <laughs> um, so that's unanimous. And with that uh, correction, but I'll move to approve those minutes of July 17th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, it's unanimous. We have four warrants. We have an accounts payable warrant in the amount of $41,621.21. And also um, in the amount of $86,103.93. We have a payroll warrant in the amount of $106,492.70. We have a payroll reduction warrant in the amount of $25,623.71. I'll make a motion to uh, approve those uh, warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings attended by select board members. Anybody? Not right. Um, let's see, had an emergency management meeting, had a um, mass and motion meeting, and had several meetings with Veronique. Um, but that's about it. Um, public comments, anybody? Okay. Um, since since the chief is here, we want to. Um, I'm going to move move his item up first. About to have a quorum. You're about to have a quorum. All right. About fifteen seconds. Um, oh, he may get lost. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, discussion and a vote on signing a new uh, clinical support options agreement. And um, very glad to see this. Very glad to see this. This is this is what um, uh, the Asheville Police Chief. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you want you want to talk about it? I don't know anything about it really, other than what I've read. I know Conway used to partake in it as far as we had an officer that would drive the woman around. Oh, since she injured her leg, she has not been able to do that. And the former chief nor I have stepped up yet. I know this is something that the Deerfield Police Chief was is really big on as well. Um, and it's a big. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not against it. Good. Good. I just we're a one man team right now, so I don't have a lot to choose from. Right. I do know that um, in the past, people, you know, residents having an acute mental health crisis, they were taken, still taken to the Franklin County Jail. That was really the option that we had. Um, and uh, this provides a different option. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm all for it. We can. Get people out of the jail system and uh, absolutely. Yeah. So essentially, if someone's having a mental health crisis, they like what exactly does this agreement entail? So, my understanding is that we are part of this consortium of towns where Williamsburg was just added, where we have one CSO person that is on all week, seven days a week, I believe, or five days a week, excuse me. 
And there's specific days where different departments will drive her around and respond to calls. Um, even the state police are involved with it. Um, right now, Asheville does it. I think Cole Rain takes her for a day. Plainfield takes her for a day. Conway used to take her on a Wednesday. Um, we don't presently do that. I'm still trying to get my feet on the ground firmly. And when a call comes in, we would go to whichever place is in that town. So it could be Cole Rain, could be Heath, Rowe, Charlemont, Buckland, Shelburne, Conway, Goshen, Plainfield, and Williamsburg. There's 15. That we cover that whole area. Okay. So we would drive her to that so that she could supply assistance to that person. See if you know, the idea is that we're not in full uniform. Right? Mm -hmm. I'd probably be not unlike what I'm in now. Um, and this we're there to support the CSO person. Yeah. So as opposed to us being, well, as opposed to her being on call for us, it's kind of like we're on call for her so that there's a designated day that she needs to go. Yeah, like so if I, call. if we started to do it, and if I went back to doing the Wednesdays, mm -hmm. then Wednesday I would have her meet me in Conway at probably seven or eight, and then we would drive for eight hours. Mm -hmm. It may not always be in Conway. If we don't have a call, right. chances are she would belly on up to my desk up there and she could do her stuff while I have to do my stuff. Okay. And if we get a call and we just, we go out to that mm -hmm. specific spot. Okay. Right now, I don't know if Conway has had any, but I know that like Christina has been to multiple towns and helped out along the way. Mm -hmm. but it's a great program. I just, I just don't know a lot about it because we were just starting to get it my previous department before we left. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not technically certified to do it because you have to have a CIT training. Um, I have a 40 hour price of negotiation training, but I was told that that doesn't count. I can still talk to somebody out of the pieces. It works. Not going to be like, you're going to jump off a bridge. It's not that. So. Any other questions on that? I did have a question as to whether this is this diversion agreement would be the path that um, people calling with overdoses would take. I believe it is. Yep. I believe they would get involved with those calls. <clears throat> I know there was a CSO call. It was today, earlier today, where UMass PD wanted, I think, Labrit to go to a certain house. Well, Leverett had the CSO agent or person with him. So they got bombs to him and they went over him. So were there for that Leverett chief, he didn't have to divert away from his town. He could do his stuff or his sergeant was the one that would had her today. But that that's like there with Irving, Bernston, Biden, Northfield. Leverage shoots for it. Well, that different CSO started with Greenfield and Deerfield and Montague. It's a big hit. So they've kind of been expanding it out. And I believe it's used the signature of Bill and myself. And if you need more information, the Asheville Chief is going to avail herself to come back and speak to you guys. I wasn't sure that was. Fun. No, this is. Does this cost us anything? Or is just a. I, mean, I don't believe question. it costs the town anything other than wear and tear on the cruiser. Driving. The first time. Um, you didn't vote. <laughs> so I'm looking for a uh, motion from the select board to have the select board. I move that we sign the clinician co-responder jail diversion program services agreement with um, 
Community support. CSO. Yes. Community support. Yeah. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have affixed my signature to the original that I was supposed to. Yes, okay. to you. Are you dead already? I did. Okay. I will send this off to Act now. Thank you. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is <laughs> Thank you for having me. Welcome to Sierra. Oh, I thought there was more we needed to yeah, discuss. So there are, there are yeah, yeah, there is actually. Transfer. Yeah, your line, um, line well, transfer. Yeah, I think finance needs to call. Yeah, I make a motion to call the joint meeting of the General Select Board and Water. Second. Second. Favor. Second. All right, all right. It's unanimous. We're here. We're here. Yeah, John. John, can you hear us? Oh, he's back. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Any further discussion or comments on the request by uh, Chief Fates here to transfer $1,150 from account ID 1110 to account ID 4200 for two uh, radar speeds? Did forget to add one thing on there that I noticed was the. Uh, no, I think that was just for the radar speeds on here. I think I said it's a, these are they contain the speeders. Are these are for two speeders. additional. Yes. Yeah. The same size as the other one. Exact same thing. Yeah. Do we know where we're going to place them? I have no idea. I am open for suggestions. Yeah, and they, they're movable too. So okay. the ones that are up by, there's one by Owasco now. I think there's one out on Bay Road. Shelman Falls Road, close to the. Close to the uh, Masonic Lodge, where people just gun it right oh, there and yeah. accelerate rapidly. Yeah, and the good thing about them is they actually they track a lot of data that I can download. I'll figure out how to do that yet. But I have the means. I just have to have the knowledge to pull that. That way, there I can download. We can find out like what the peak times of people are speeding, what the rough speed is. Um, so it's Roy is really good with technology. <laughs> I'm sorry. Roy right, can download anything. That's not important. Sure. Any further discussion? John, have you anything to say? Uh -huh. But this is to, this is to make up a shortfall for what was appropriate. Is that correct? Oh, no, 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 this no, is what to use. It's to use what wasn't spent. What wasn't spent. The usual I spent spent to move over from one line to the next. And overall, I want to increase our town's budget. And we need budget, and that's it. Well, no, it's, it's, this is a line for one test. That's it. Yeah. And overall, I want to. Oh, yeah. line. it's almost like three cars now. Yeah, really. Keep going so I make a motion to approve the item to item, 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 item transfer. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Raise your hand. Um, yeah, so I'm going to also be a I had done a traffic not able to locate it fast enough. So probably identical to his because I think we got it from the same person. 
policies and grants and kind of all can be in there. They come in. So I do have it if you want to peruse it, but I think it's ten minutes from the floor. One of the big issues that we're having is I'm going outside of town for a lot of details, and we're losing not necessarily because it's a mass highway right now, but if I have to go outside for private work, that's a 10% admin fee that we aren't getting. That if I could get our own people to do it, it's the 10% that we can do that So I'd rather call people to work for me than going to out of town looking for help. I've had great success with both Lee Lee and Pat Field and the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. They've all helped. I think mean, Deerfield's been out there as well. All in more than nine, giving us what we need, knowing them, but it's hard to uh, maybe six a day if we had today. So I got to go solve the bill with our guy. I had to do one to get one to the last one. I'm shocked to see our former police chief doing one two days in a row. Never no, he skipped a day. Uh, yeah, that's right. Did a Wednesday. But, but after making such a you know, funny. I knew I'd be able point to get of, point about it. Yeah, right. Exactly. I'm very convincing. So, but there's two people in particular that I have in mind right now. One of them is Jim Bernier, which I know there may be um, a easier history with the town. And the other one is Kevin Mugloski. Kevin is a former state trooper. So he's fully vested and he does whatever he needs to, to do. Very trustworthy. The last thing I'm just going to pass down is people really just came to me today. I've been reading the free work game and she goes on her sleeve. This, this is the Indian. We want to talk to see about that. Um, so, this is what I have come up with initially. It is going to change slightly because somebody flew a really nice picture that has. So basically everything on the top and the bottom part has a covered bridge for the river. Coming down the covered bridge, which he's supposed to be sending me that. So I don't know about the colors yet. So that does it does look quite a bit like the town flag, which we got dinged for national news. Because it wasn't distinctive and memorable. Hmm. Basically, but there was actually a national organization that goes around raking local government flags and it publishes and it's picked up nationally. Um, and we were in the lowest tier, like the worst flags. Well, the good thing is, this isn't a flag, so right? Right, right. Also yeah, but... in Cuba, not in care. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. I, I thought we gave the appropriate, um. I thought we gave the appropriate commentary in the uh, recorder. I do remember being quoted as saying, We don't care. I'm kind of proud of the one that we have. Well, that was, like I said, just the initial rendition that I got. But then I sent it out last Monday or Tuesday before the young lady showed me the uh, public bridge that yeah. was added to. And I kind of like the public bridge that. Let me see if I can work that. Okay. Trying to move forward. But that's all I've got. That's what, yeah, we're going to add a bridge down. Um, Anything else? Um, The deal was the concrete festival. Oh, they just put down the festival. That is what our 
So we have it's the the source of the funding. Yeah, source of funding and how it might be operated. So, um, the um, so the way the process works is that we have this emergency, the towns have to, <laughs> towns then have to assess all the damages and come up with an initial damage assessment that gets sent to NEMA. Is that just a public like that's property? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. So, and actually the reason I put first for emergency declaration of emergency spending is because we found out that there's a little discrepancy in the law here. Originally, the emergency management law says that the emergency management director gives to the uh, Chief Executive Officer to fill the declaration he signs it says he declares an emergency. That doesn't work for DOR in terms of funding. There has to be a two thirds vote of the select board for each of the events, which then get put up into the Division of Labor Services gateway so that we can now we can go tracking two events and they're saying it's okay for us to expend the money. Um, so, just to give you a quick update, our first um, initial damage assessment for the July 10th storm, the first emergency, um, has been sent into NEMA, and the total was $423,980.29. Now, the second one for the July 21st storm has not been finalized. It's due by August 4th, but um, late breaking news from Ron uh, with three minor roads still to account for was. One million seven hundred forty thousand dollars for a total of two million one hundred sixty-four thousand eighty dollars. So that's just to give us the context of the kind of money we have. Yeah, and that's 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 for that's just the public. However, in the NEMA forms, and the reason I put in the currents for people to contact me about the damages is there is a place to put in each of the forms the private damages that have occurred, and that we can keep adding to. So we will keep updating it if people keep giving me information about the damage they have the driveway washouts, the basements, everything else they have. And how are we are, are, are individuals doing that damage assessment and getting contractors coming in different prices for us to correct them? Yeah, so we're just taking now. I haven't done anything like ask for receipts or I don't know, but you know, I really truly do not know first if even the town is going to get the funding to cover the public damage. Much less the private. So there's also conflicting information out there from my perspective on what FEMA covers. I have been told by officials that FEMA does not consider gravel roads in their decision about whether or not a community or the county meets the threshold. It's 12.5. But I've been told by other people, absolutely, FEMA covers it. So I, I'm, I'm trying to get our legislators to get to the bottom of that one. So, you know, my guess at this point is that maybe they don't take it to their initial consideration. But if a disaster is declared, then you get covered. I, I'm not quite sure why there's this conflicting information. Um, so 
once the second initial damage assessment is sent to them, and then once all the other towns that have been affected have given the information to FEMA, then and only then can our legislators have any idea of how much money we're talking about and how to help us. They can't really do anything until we get that initial draft money. So, our accountant, uh, Dr. today set up pending the vote of in highway fire policing ambulance. Any deficit spending, well, any storm spending, any emergency spending, he's given a special code for both the salary and the expense line. So everything will be tracked in the budgets according to those lines. Um, and that we will then be able to, but I, I'm still waiting for which deficit spending. That's how we do. Numbers this we're talking here functional replacement. Are we talking about improved replacement or just basically just putting things back together? The way My understanding doing? is that you put it back the way it was. It's not that small. Yeah. The engineering of every single one of our roads to make it 21st century climate change, whatever it is. No, I agree. We got that, but we got a starting point. <laughs> I, I think it has something to do with uh, you know, the emergency laws. I mean, you're probably looking at it and saying, well, they don't want people to use emergency as a reason to be able to bump their roads up to a different level. I'm with you, but my well, understanding is that we have to keep it at whatever level it was. I will tell you this, MassDOT has been amazing. They have been so supportive. They're, they're fixing way the road for us. Um, they lent us a vacuum truck to clean up culverts and catch basins. We've got, you can see around town, MassDOT traffic cones. Um, they, they've just been phenomenal. Um, the two main roads right now, just so you're aware, um, obviously, Fields Hill, we need to get finished. It's, it's possible for EMS. But they're they're working on it to make it at least hopefully as good as it was before. It's always been a little bit of a challenge for them. And then Adams Road, has, but mostly Adams Road, there is a complete total lockdown. Turns out it was a seven foot poker. So that one we're gonna have to, the initial just guesstimate is fifty thousand um, dollars. and that one we're gonna have to we're I'm asking um the state for an emergency waiver request so that we don't have to go through a procurement where we have to advertise for anything else, that we can just get three quotes and then go ahead and get a contract and get working on it to get it open as fast as possible. But what, what makes a lot of sense is we requested waiver goes with it from that side and they, they're on it. Oh, yeah, they're absolutely on it. That was a very, that's a very expensive fix. Yes. Those culverts are numerous and expensive. It was 300,000, I think I was quoted for the culprit to look And so, I mean, our worst roads, our most expensive repairs are what we wanted to do. That's the only fast. Um, yeah, you can't, I don't believe you can drive all the way through, but at least all the houses are accessible because the first goal is to make sure that every single house has EMS services. And that's why Adams is such a big concern. Um, because there's no way you can get if God forbid something happens. Nobody's at, at the homes at the moment, so. We wanted to try to come to a meeting last week that was not a public meeting. The residents that are most affected by the new public road closure, um, this the select board here in the town to know that they don't think it's cost effective or wise to open that road or to fix both ends of that road. They only need to get in one end of the other. Areas, but both of both of those things on either side of their house, you know, that last house on the Poland Road, um, and it's like a half mile to North Poland Road or a half mile to Home Gate where there's a chance of an But um, they don't think it makes any sense at all to fix that road in both directions. And why don't we try to prevent it? Well, I, I think I. I would love to see us have that conversation with the 
financial services that's growing more and more stuff. Question one, um, uh, is there an anomaly subsequent? I want to tell you the structure is likely to be fairly good. You know that it's not that hard in the state. Well, the state, the, yeah, DOT has been amazing. They're actually looking at land. So there's been a huge problem with water coming down from Pine Hill, the upper back is down the river street. And DOT, well, Phil can tell you more because you met with that one day. Yeah, so that stream has um, it goes underground um, in two residences along the winter line, the line. Uh, and the, nobody quite knows where it goes to. Um, the belief from the fire chief has always been that it goes to the middle of 116 and it makes a turn following the double yellow lines to the holding tank right before the bridge. Now, Scott, when they were there, said that's impossible. We only do underground, we only do straight lines. Um, and if it was ever something that they dealt with in any way, even if it was paving over it, they would not have done it with several turns that go underground. Um, the, the first engineer, Dave Smith, who's our District One engineer out of Pittsfield, when he came out, the first thing he said was, "All, all they do is surface road, surface water on the road. This isn't that, so they're not going to do anything about it." But then, after the twenty first, um, when they saw the video of the level of water coming off of that stream and onto the road, and how it was clearly endangering traffic, um, he came back with uh, his boss with the regional mascot boss for, out of Springfield and with the big, big mascot engineer boss, the chief engineer out of Boston. Um, and they came without calling, without notifying anything, just a caravan of five cars. And they spent an hour walking around um, and they're gonna dig up all their old records that are in school, whatever. Because there was a point in time when we were part of the district that's in Deerfield. We got switched to the district of Pittsfield. They're going to look at the old Deerfield, but um, they feel like a solution to this must be engineered. And they committed to doing the engineering. Um, but that includes all the way from Pine Hill. Yeah. Well, so they're not, Baptist. they believe that that, that, that upper Baptist Hill Road drains into that in some capacity. But there, I know Ron's of the opinion that many of those drains just go to. Voids underground. They just go for a while and then they stop. And that is, and they just so it rises to the surface and then explains the crazy amount of water that has been coming off of that stream. That none of us have ever seen like that before. Like thousands of gallons a minute. And yeah, so that's what we're trying to do. Right? But regardless, what they're going to do is die tests uh, with all of the possible. Sources um, put that guide in the field and uh, see what see where it goes to. Um, so we can't commit to, to fixing it until we know what the engineer says about the prices. But so I wouldn't agree with your impossible. We weren't serious about that. So, um, so I mean, that was. That's potential good news. They were like, you just have to get through this year, probably next year too, maybe probably the next year after that. Um, is it's messed up and it's engineering. And I don't know if there are any other sections of town that need some engineering work like that. Well, it sounds like fields down. I know that there is some concern about certain things that are like, uh, Road. The reason that they're doing that though is because the water, when it doesn't go underground, it goes on top of the state road. That's the reason that they're doing it. That is, it, it is a dangerous to traffic moving on that road. Fields Hill would not That's have right. such a, so it, it would have to, you know, the only thing that they're going to do is they're going to impact. 
tax the notary public. But it seems like at some point that the mass dot is the town is the one that us to do that engineering study to figure out which roads can sustain eight inches of water in an hour or well they are working on reading. So I mean they are yeah. Yeah. But it's they're not gonna but, but they're not gonna do feel like that. Right. You know, then probably plenty of other roads that are equally as vulnerable. They have not been asked to do anything like this. So um Ron expects to have that fully passable and okay for people looking to do this. I mean it's good. I, I looked at it that goes last day, there's lots of it through and it's like the edge is getting nervous. <laughs> you know? um, so if we go past all the support and do it To the best of my knowledge, this is called an initial damage assessment. Oh, okay. If you understand that, it's the best of my knowledge. Now, I don't know if it gets declared. I think FEMA might be a little different than FEMA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a little confusion about that. But since nothing has been declared that would be FEMA eligible yet, you know, we're doing all of our data collection as if it were FEMA so that if we get there, we're okay. But, but it's still in the interpretation. The other thing is that um, FEMA had stated when we were there that they were contemplating declaring the storm of the 10th, the storm of the 21st, and also the storm of the 14th, Thursday, the 16th, 16th. 16th. Yeah. yeah, that was declaring that one single storm event. And we want them to do that. That would help people that are making homeowners claims. So that instead of making two or three separate claims, which is not good for your future homeowners rates, if you just make multiple claims for one storm event, that's much better for homeowners. Some of us are. Is that the law? Along the same line, other things. Is it helpful to stay calm? Declare some kind of vote to prevent. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, because you're saying they, they have basically say uh, there was warning yeah. here's this event, it lasts from this day until this day. No, I'm saying that they determined that it's a new. Does that affect the A? Because the reason I'm bringing this up, we had some kind of I was unusual, but your land that you are living in, where the how where the pole snapped by um, the neighbor's yard, the front yard on Waitley Road, you can draw a straight line between that and my French doors that go to a deck that blew open, and it never ever happened to me before. And you go further up, and there are trees down. And so there was an event. It was, it was part of that second storm, I believe. But nobody's talked about it, and I just don't know if it pays to mention that someplace. Well, um, that, that's the one that threw off some sus suspected tornadoes, but they were never able to ever confirm this. It was already as much. I don't know if said it was lightning that. It was cool, but I don't think they did. And then they have that microburst category. Yeah. So, one other thing I wanted to mention is the ball field and village drainage improvements that were part of the million plus project to give us a nice ball field. Did that hold up? Yeah. It did. It did pretty much. I mean, there were some issues with. See pictures of some of the street. Thank you. 
Uncles need to be weaned on. There were people playing on that field this weekend. Yeah, I, I honestly have not heard any talk of redoing the maps, but you know, we have three different kinds of maps. You've got the FEMA 100 year flood, you've got the river quarter, you've got the floodplain. So, um, and I believe that the, all the homeowners go about the FEMA maps. Yeah. So, um, I haven't heard any of that. Other ones damage the properties that are not in the property. Mm -hmm. Literally, we can damage them with rushing water from the uptown. But all, all the, as far as I know, um, there's six homes in that way that are actually on, you know, six or eight, I forget, that are in FEMA designated flood zones. And they're the ones that are eligible for the federal flood insurance. Yes. But the federal flood insurance also does not cover anything. That's why you see all of every single Barrier Island short house country being built with all of the guts of everything on the ground floor. And I also, when I was at the other, the other meeting that I was at, was the, um, the Habitat for Humanity House breaking, House One, whatever thing. Uh, but I see that house, and they have the same pattern that they build basically nationwide. They don't they don't build basements, period. Talking with the cover damage. Yeah. Where is that? 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 So it's the very time it's trailed and the fish grilled. And so it's the improvements to go on the There's no boat or gravel. Yeah. Field. Never mind me. I'm the gentleman or people over on the, you know, a fisher who did that thing with it. Yeah. That's a trigger to rest. So, so where does that fall? Do you, anybody know? <laughs> So, and, and that's part of basically what what people don't get is that every single road in Conway has been damaged because even if it's the hard top, the hard top that didn't break up from the rain, the, the shoulders of gravel, which sure. are the drainage part, sure. are gone from everywhere. Um, and that's, they, we do have the equipment to deal with that, but that's just not as much of a priority as making sure people can get in and out of their homes. And, and then once it's once it's getting in and out of their homes, it's making it from a one lane road to back to a two lane road. So people don't need to be a Formula One race car driver to get around their homes to get like people on them. No, it's not. There's some, there's some older folks in town that are really, really freaked out about the driving skills that are now required. Right. So, so just to answer your question, to the my understanding is that the town doesn't deal with damage on private property, which is kind of the short answer to that, which is not great. But and I understand that it's coming from the roads, but so that that has been that has been what what we've been told. But when in fact the town is the cause of the, the damage. And whether the town likes it or not, the town's responsible to some extent with the other causes of that damage. Um, and that's just how well, law I mean, works. And it's like, um, you know, that's. I mean, but how, but how do you, I mean, like, I, I get that argument, but also how do you determine that, like, it was actually, I mean, some could say, like, you know, the town didn't properly maintain this road, and that's the reason that, like, our husband should come. How do you establish that the town say, like, no, actually, this is 
peace about what we know and no one expected eight inches of rain and then more. Like, how are we supposed to know? <laughs> but, like, it's just going to happen every time. I mean, I think it's because, like, I, I, I totally get, like, a homeowner being like, it sounds responsible, but as a, also as a taxpayer, I get how people say, like, no, I'm not. Like, like, I'm, like I don't want to pay, you know, this money to fix this road that didn't affect me, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a situation. We know that the city was prepared to it's going to be worse in the In some way, we don't know how war can be. But it's good to me the government. Uh, it's just fixing the road, especially the need, or also fixing and doing some engineers and also preventing yeah. a huge disaster in the future. Because of the well, and we and we we had you know grants to study the floodplain in the center of town because that was what we you know after Hurricane Irene that was like the big thing to be worried about is like. Flooding of South River, but you know, now do we need to be like, okay, like we need to go out for grants to anticipate 10 inches of rain in an hour? Like, and you know, now do we need to do that for all of the, like for all of our roads? And how do we prioritize which roads are at greater risk of you know, damage um, because of climate change? Part of the problem is doing the drive around with Ron has become obvious is that different parts of town got different amounts. Water. So there's no predicting which, and you could, you know, you could try and say, okay, ten inches of rain on this road is going to do this, but um, yeah, it's going to be very difficult to predict. What I would say is that that exact question is being asked at the state level: how do we protect everybody? How on earth do we figure out how to reallocate resources to make sure that residents are safe? And to be honest with you, I think it's just it's an unknown. It doesn't, doesn't make sense to have town roads that serve one home. We have too many of them. Um, does it make sense, you know, like like I would like like the the main Poland Road thing where it's a half an hour, a, a half a mile on either side of that last residence um, that are both very expensive to maintain because it's wetland and steep, steep mountain on one side and wet land on the other. Rivers and waterfalls. Does, does it make sense to you know, find it? Does it there, there's other roads too that just doesn't, if there's no houses at all on them, does it make it, 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 There's all these, you know, one of the things to me is we should try to reduce the amount of roads that we have that, that we are responsible for because it's really clear that they, they become a very expensive burden. And that, the irony of all this too is that. Um, how many people in the town have that, that live on Main Street, River Street, Monday Street, Astro Street, all 118? That the state is, you know, that, that everything that we're considering, all these emergency uh, spending things, none of they don't, those homes um, don't benefit from that, except to the extent that they want to visit their friends and neighbors that do live on those roads. Um, and that there's a huge chunk of our population that we're asking once again to fund the highway department and all this stuff. Uh, and, well, there are a lot of people that we have to talk Right, it's the same. You don't it's just stand in a row. You have to talk, you have to be prepared to be taken. Of course, you know, it's along, along, it. yeah. uh, along the same lines that you are. And I said, oh, to me, this was, to me, it's the state people in the feds have got to know it's the wrong response because this is the opportunity to you, you go with what you have. We had these storms, you can see where the failures are, you can remediate, remediate that, and then you get the next ones, you're going to have other failures. The thing about water is this it's all it takes is a small failure. To become a big failure in a really short time. I mean, new streams get cut, 
that, and there's no way to really forecast this. I don't believe anything because the ground itself shifts, and what's a low point now might not be a low point, you know, next year or whatever. So, Do you want to the finance community? Well, or so it? one of the reasons um, that I thought we should talk about sources of funding and why actually I asked Jan if she could come was to talk about our cash flow and whether or not we're we going to have special town meetings or some borrowing, you know, all that. Hear the word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What do we have in free cash? <laughs> Nothing right now because it's not certified until the end of the time. <laughs> You know, my thing about any town spending, even emergency spending, I mean, I, I see the need for it, but I don't do, I don't do blank checks. Well, you know, isn't there the charter and the state constitution requires some, some degree of roadworthiness in the town? Or else don't call yourself a town. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't. And we know that it's at the moment two million two hundred thousand dollars. This what, what is? Are we? Are we? Do we know what Deerfield and Greenfield are doing? All the same things we are trying yeah. to figure out. They're watching us, right? We got we got we got it worse than they did by a lot. Yes. a lot of us. No matter how many times I was wishing that it was the opposite. If I can make a suggestion, please. The finance the paper thing is probably over a series of time to get the first over a series of time. Maybe we can work on a finance team to help figure out how we can get the money out of the time, how we can set up with Michael Chubb and the team. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't think we have too many people in the process. Yeah, but that's the problem. No, we don't. And, and we are allowed to move the stabilization fund, but then yeah. there comes up the question of free cash and whether that's going to cost us to take. That's why Jan knows what we have. I think we said maybe our what we have is available. Mm -hmm. So my thought is, you know, the state government will take it, take it the time to reimburse us. But also with NAFTA, if it's very outrageous, and I just put it in half. Right, that's my concern. So I know that the legislators were concerned that after I read it, the 2018 council would reimburse us. That's a long stretch. So that's why it seems to me that it was probably likely that we would have to ask for some borrowing just to cover because otherwise we're we can deficit spend, but we still have to pay the bills. So we can source that. So I think you're right. It's probably a good financial meeting that you should have to sit yeah. down. We're probably kind of early now, but maybe August fourth is a good yeah, talking local sources be a lot of give any kind of a turnaround window of when we find out. Oh, oh, you no. Know, so when, yeah, so when Nina gets ours on August 4th, I don't know what other town, maybe that's the deadline for all the towns. I have no idea how quickly they're going to be able to take all that data and come back and say whether or not it meets food standards and whether or not then, then the legislature is going to try to find their money. I would tell you that my guess is that we should not expect anything forthcoming soon. So we're going to need to cover ourselves. It wouldn't surprise me if it's not for a year or two. Okay. I, I feel fairly confident that, you know, I've gotten some verbal commitments that, you know, the state will be with us. But in, again, until they know how much money we're really talking, until they've said formally how much we need, and until they've gone looking for it, you know, we can't, we can't count them. It's in our basket just to keep oh, yeah. So in the meantime, how is the Harvey Department prioritizing which roads that safety possible? So it's, a, it's all about EMS. So the two big concerns right now are getting Fields Hill 
more stabilized than the atoms. Um, those are just too big because mass due to fact that it's taking care of weight alone. Um, yeah, the estimate I heard is atoms alone is 50,000 worth of grass. Well, it was 50,000 per, that's what the estimate was to repair it, and that includes the culvert. And actually, I believe they're, they were out there tonight yes. with DDP mm -hmm. on both Waitley and Adams to check it out because we have to get permits for the culverts. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, no. That's what I was told. That's what I was told. But they're not going to tell you. And I did put that in an email. Yes, so I have a paper And that's why that's why we want to keep on keep on tapping that until the yeah, well dry. Yeah. Um, it, it is. Oh, yeah. But um, from what I understand in our whole, so you know, we're part of the whole the, the DOT region um, that is all of Berkshire County and the towns. Driving through which are going today, I saw we're getting back to finance the around the one of the things, though, that's pretty apparent is the hiring department now is screening people, screening candidates. Yes, that's James. We Really? Oh, I yes. Didn't, I didn't see that. Yes. No, it's um, been. Because, because the amount of overtime that was going out. Lots. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Part of the reason is because of our salary. As we talked about, you know, we're not getting people with CDLs at the amount of time. So that's a huge discussion. Well, in terms of state certification, we're going to the state and 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 the the state and 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 the so it should be not a little nice number. Um, but this, I mean, the, just so that everybody understands, the total two million one hundred sixty-four thousand eighty dollars and twenty-nine cents that doesn't include the three additional roads. Uh, that is something like ninety percent of our non-school budget. That's just not something. Yeah, this is big one. Like that, you know, yes. and, and and we have another horrendous forecast for Thursday going into Friday. Three more inches. That's, that's interesting. Before this cold front came through, I happened to have been in West Hampton, the gravel road. And it freaking rained as hard there as it did during the storms we had. And it just didn't rain as long. But I was thinking about it. We were just on the fringes of it here. If that had been here together, I mean, instead of the mini Grand Canyon, I'd be looking at many Grand Canyons. <laughs> so I uh, to hear our tourist admission. Just make, make a request to this one to be selected. Yeah. I mean, when it's really needed, I mean, there it is. I'll bring twist. Yeah. We got water. Um, water. Yeah. Hello.
And I agree with uh, Barry, you know, it could take a very long time to get that money back in. So I don't think we necessarily want to tie up your stabilization money for that yeah, long. Yeah. Or, or we have a lot of CPA money, so it's like plenty of cash sitting yeah. in our bank account. But we're often wanting to defer that in different ways. Mm -hmm. Our orders would definitely come to add strength of that. We can offer this count people to pay their property taxes in November by a weekend if you need to plan to pay right now. <laughs> I was told there are two people in town who do this. Oh, really? They're good people. <laughs> Sheep in the borrowing money. Any idea, Jan, what the uh, rates are from the state has? I haven't looked lately. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Certainly not what it was a few years. Okay. No. I'm sure they've gone up. Thank you. Uh, well, this is depressing enough. <laughs> no, it's really it's bad. Yes. It's bad. This and is, so this there was bad. I know that um I remember if it was where I read, is there still um uh, is it still beneficial to encourage residents to be calling Natalie and uh Jim McGovern and all the officials that they can get a hold of, especially the governor's office. The answer is yes. Yeah, so, but especially the governor's office. Yes. It's only so like they have called you and said, stop having our your people call. The governor can sign the document that frees that, that, that frees up the state's purse strings in a way that the legislature can't. Um, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. So I, okay. yeah. And also, maybe yeah. this needs to be. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> I think the quarter quote me, quote my name, quote me. Yeah, Mr. Gripko, if you have a bunch of school buses, we can go to the, we can go to the governor's office and you know, raise, yeah. raise some high holy act. It's, 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 it's really Conway, too. It's not the, the problem with our legislature, we're their their power is so diluted by the number of towns that they must represent. Yeah. You know, what does Natalie have? 19 now, now he's got 24. I think I forget it, got, it went up a lot. Um, Paul Marx has got 45, 49, 47, 47, which is just that's that's not like that's not actual. Sword, that's like that's like it's not actual representation. I know. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, so. Oh, yeah. the, the thing to remember to tell ever, to tell them is that verifiably Conway got the most rain in the state to the, both of these big storms. Oh yeah, like and second place was distant second in both of them, which is which meteorologically that's been explained to me is like almost impossible. Yeah, <laughs> that because because we're not we're we're not at the right altitude. <laughs> um, we're, not, we're 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 like a middling thousand foot average altitude. Yeah. We're not right along the. At ground level, and we're not at at high level, and those are the ones that traditionally expect to have the worst storm totals in any given storm. Just um, like that tornado in February twenty fifth, two thousand seventeen. Mm -hmm. Tornadoes don't happen. Yeah. So I don't know. It's all you know, ten inches in an hour versus over a twenty four hour period is a whole world of difference. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it's yeah, sobering. And you know our fire department was working really hard. <laughs> they set their they already set their annual record for most calls responded to, um, and uh, yeah, they they went from responding to I don't I forget how few the the annual average is not very many, um, and they were doing that each day of these. And um, our the the neighboring fire departments that came Point Paul Deerfield Shelton Falls Ashfield. Etc. is a credit to them. Um, well, I should say it was south here, but it just did not do for me. Right, last question for me. Has there ever been talk at the state level over insuring for these types of events? 
That's state, what I know. state insurance cam, state yeah. running their own insurance. Yeah. Insurance yeah. companies are insurance. pulling out of markets oh, all over I, the I country. Have. So I <laughs> listen, listen, I'm well aware of this, but they're being replaced by other entities. That, and I just wonder if because really what we're talking about here, we were the beneficiary of all this rain. But in reality, it could have happened to any of the towns that are around just by the grace of God. It didn't happen to them. But if people, you know, again, so you think, well, you pool resources. That's what insurance really is. Yeah. And so, and you try and spread the risk as much as you can. And it's just, it's just the thought. I, honestly, I, I thought, I thought. The best thing that could happen to us is if Boston gets hit with one of these storms. Exactly. And, they haven't done in a while. And, so and, and yeah, yeah. And um, you know, and, and the 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 philosophical problem that we always run into is we're asking for help, we're asking for the transfer of income of wealth from, from there to these here. people yeah. in these towns and cities that can't find us in the map, yeah. don't know we exist. And um us as an appendage that you know comes with their territory whatever like we're not you know never, we have, we have two few, we have too few votes to be of significance yeah. to any elected official statewide um like alaska we're like the alaska <laughs> of the united states yes high maintenance but yeah but they have something good on the story yeah say. yeah exactly we don't have that yet but you never know there are, there are silver mines in China. Yeah, supposedly. Supposedly. Well, I, I George, do you have anything to add to the SORN discussion? I figured that's why you're here. Oh, don't get me started. No, I did. You got a letter, so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just want to withdraw? Us? I make a motion to you. Second. All in favor? All right. Um, Thank you. Do we need the Danian? Do they need to be here to vote on the American spending thing? That's a select board vote. Yeah, that's why I put it first because it was separate from their meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we do. I'll So to vote on the emergency declaration. So you know it's it's always interesting when there's a law in effect and a state agency gives guidance to do something other than what that law says. And you you know you want to stay in that agency. You want to that's the agency that matters a lot to your day to day governance. Nonetheless, it is contrary to what the actual law says. So. Um, so, but, I mean, I'm okay with doing the emergency declaration. My thing, though, is um, I'm I'm not okay, and I, and I I've been consistent with this ever since I came on the school committee 15 years ago. Like, I don't do blank checks. I just don't. Um, and I'm not, I don't I don't have a mechanism even in mind about. It. How to not do a blank check, but uh, but I'm not. Well, all I can say is if this does not pass, then we will not be able to deficit spend at all. We won't be able to pay our bills for the emergency. There has to be some contemporaneous reporting requirement so that um, you know, and, and and an opportunity to discuss the wisdom of it. I'm not quite sure what you mean. I mean, the roads will get fixed and Ron will submit the bills as the roads are getting fixed. It's, you know, we could certainly set something up where 
Well, actually, you'll be able to see it, I would assume, on the um, on the warrants. Maybe there's some way we can get that set up so that we see what the versions are spending in each time on the warrants and there'll be special codes. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I that's mean, like how how do we not repair? How do we not repair the roads? How do we not like? So this isn't a blank check. This is giving you the the town the authority to deficit spend, and every two weeks you're going to be renewing the warrant to pay the bills. I guess is the way I look at it. The written approval of the director. Who's the director? Oh, well, there, that mentions several people, not just the director, right? Um, I mean, it basically says that the town can, this is the, their, their circumstances under which we can deficit spend. And, and one of them is a natural disaster, yes. like flooding. Yes. So and that's why I, I gave you this so you could see that. Um, approval of the director, I see where you are. Yeah, sorry, second page, um, second page. I mean, I just, I don't see how we say, to people who live in fields so like or like out like how do we just say sorry we don't have the money we're not fixing the road we're gonna wait and see what the state does we're just not we're just not gonna do this I mean I don't think that's acceptable especially if I I mean I feel like it's fairly certain we are gonna get some reimbursement from the state um so yeah basically this NGL I think the director what there's I think they're kind of trying to cover all the different potential positions in a municipality that might be covered. That's my sense of it, but I could be wrong. Because then it mentions by the auditor or the accountant or other officer having similar duties or by the treasurer, if there is no such author, no officer, right. you know, so I think they're just kind of covered. But, you know, I went over this with Mike Chela and he was like, yes, okay, so this is what gives you the authority. He read over the motions and he was good with them. So, so if we don't, vote yay on an emergency declaration and emergency spending that means what that we just we're out of luck for getting reimbursed because i won't be able to put it into the division of local services as a declared emergency by the select board and therefore anytime we we're trying to get reimbursement it'd be for what you haven't done your two-thirds vote so we can't get reimbursed and we can't do the work because we don't have the money to do the work to fix the you rent. can't deficit spend exactly okay i mean i honestly don't see a way around this um, so, Phil, what is your argument against? So, subject to approval on the in, in, in uh, signing a signature on the warrant, um, approval in the warrant. Did I, uh, I something? Yes. I just have an idea. Yes. I started on ECM with Phil's thing, just you know, with the reasoning. You know, you're, you're basically telling the department of land to spend whatever you want, emergency, no budget, go for it. Mm -hmm. So, is there any way for him or Somebody to uh, give proposals before the work is done because once the work is done and the invoice comes in, we're, we're bound to pay that bill. So, we do a final approval to reject it, we put the town in a really bad place. So, you know, is there a way to review before then? Most of it's going to be for gravel and overtime of the highway parts, so I'm not really sure. And we may still be getting some right. free and gravel. It, so it may require some additional involvement by the select board to so review that more regularly of where we at, how much gravel we bought, where can yeah, sort of it. regular digging into the data. Right. And that's why not waiting for the two week warrant to come through and be surprised by a million dollar bill. And it's the you know, and I know he's working 20 hour days, um, but there still is like a requirement that he does what he can to save the town money, like even though that's a time consuming thing. Like it's easier to dial 1 800 give me gravel now. No, he's like, not. But I think that's why he hired one because we all know he's yeah, and he has and he's got. Point. Gravel bids. My only concern with that approach would be delaying Ron's work and then having the townspeople be upset with us because it's not getting done so fast because we're micromanaging how it's got right. yeah, That's my only There's concern. Multiple angry calls a day already. And you know, if, if every two weeks isn't enough, I mean, that's you know to review what's going on. And Ron did mention to me this is not all going to come at once. This is going to be a long-term fix. 
which is one of the reasons you see in my TA update that I'm asking for two extensions on two of the projects that were supposed to get done this year by the highway department because they're not going to have time because they're going to be too busy trying to fix our roads. Yeah, I have the same issue that I said before about chapter 44, section 31 here. Is it just keep on? There's obviously some director of responsibility somewhere because it goes over and over again that the select board, town council, district commissioners need to notify the director for the director to make to approve expenditures and appropriate funds as, as needed. So that's where. Oh, are they maybe talking about Department of Revenue? Possibly. The director may uh, promulgate, promulgate and revise rules, rules, regulations regarding approval of emergency expenditures. I mean, everywhere in here, it's saying director, like, director is basically in charge of what gets spent and where, where the money comes from. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. That's probably what that is that they're referring to because we have to get permission still from the Department of Revenue, which is why I, I can't even get that permission until this vote is taken so that I can upload it into the um, probably it doesn't specify right here in the unless you see something that I'm missing. But this is the <laughs> and I mean, this this whole thing is just really upsetting on so many levels but you know we when when we heard last week that from the resident that came in it's just economically there's so, there's we have such a so many people in this town that are economically precarious and the homeowner the, the the property tax bill is such an onerous thing twice a year and what this is fixing to do to it it's sad um and it's gonna it's gonna really negatively affect people. Yeah. You know, um, so like I I know I know that there's a need to get the work done, but there's also a need to get the work done as inexpensively as possible, and with as less little overtime as possible. That's the one thing that that is a variable that we could affect by enlarging that department. Well, uh, we could find. <laughs> I mean, we've had vacant positions in the highway department for a couple years now. Like Ernie said, we can, you know, make that position more attractive. So we can um, be competitive with other people who are hiring. When you when you look, we're in the middle. When you look at the thing, we're 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 in the middle. Um, and my understanding is towns that are paying more aren't having any greater success stamping fully than we are. Um, well, honestly, the CDL requirement is uh, is problematic just because they, that, that requires drug testing and that eliminates a large portion of the available labor pool. Um, and it's ridiculous that that drug testing includes cannabis um, which is a legal substance in this state and it stays in your blood for months. Um, whereas cocaine and heroin apparently flush out of your body relatively fast. But, yeah, that's not, we don't have any control over that. Right. That would be a great waiver for the state to be able to do though. Be able to hire and put, waive the CDL requirements. My concern on the spending is what we talked about before. There's another storm coming. Next year is already predicted to be yet another uh, El Nino. So we could potentially have horrendous storms again next year. So what's the plan for these repairs? Are we what level are we getting these repairs to? Is basically what I'm saying. You know, do we want the road to look exactly like it looked before? For, knowing that a potential storm is coming in three weeks that could wipe it out again. Yeah, that is. Or do we need all the vulnerable rural roads in town to be able to withstand, you know, 10 inches of rain in an hour? 
Like, is that what we have to build to? And if that's, you know, that, and then how do we pay for the engineering? And then, I mean, I hear the people who can't, you know, like, we're, like they don't want their property taxes to grow up any or to, you know, to go any higher. But then, you know, I you hear the people on Fields Hill Road who are like, this road need, you know, like we live here, like this road needs to be re-engineered. And the town should pay for it. Access yeah. and safety are key. I'm just worried about the, you know, not worried. There's going to be complaints coming in about this looks bad, right? Yeah, I mean, and I then you have to say, who cares? <laughs> at the, at, who cares what it looks like right now? Right. You know, I've already heard those complaints. The whole town, I mean, the whole town looks like not so good. Yeah, it doesn't drive around. There's not a single road that looks good. Nope. And all you see is debris and wreckage. So access and safety should definitely be priority as it is right now. But that, that's my concern is mm -hmm. that we're looking at a budget to basically make these roads look exactly like they looked before when we know they're flawed, some of the engineering's flawed, and we know that they could potentially be um, willing to get again. Well, in terms of the motions themselves, they don't speak to that at all. All they're doing is saying that the board is declaring a state of emergency and that under this, the departments have assigned codes where deficit emergency spending will occur. There's nothing in there that's about oversight or control. That's certainly something that the board could set up later. Yeah, and I would just like to see the planning also. Like, There's already a plan in place before these storms happen to repair roads. There's annual repairs, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I want to see. What 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 was on the, the plan for this coming fiscal year? Um, what money is allocated to fix what roads, to do what repairs? What can we look at and say, hey, maybe we don't need these barriers that we were going to spend a lot of money on and allocate that money to help repair extremely damaged roads instead? That's really what I want to see. Not time to put in sidewalks and stuff like that right no, now. The, you know? the, the actual step up in engineering required to deal with heavy heavy rainfall is it is really dramatic. Yeah. It is really dramatic. It's not just the installation of culverts, it's those concrete blow box things, way station little things, and then it has to go to the and how every um, road is graded and, and the like, steepness of every road. If, if I could just make a comparison between what we're trying to do here with the motions and what's already in place, I did kind of make a joke to Representative Blay that, you know, the only account that's already out there that can legally be overspent is snow and ice. And I said, you've got to change into snow, ice, and water because that's what it's coming down to. But so already you have a mechanism in town that can be overspent. Correct. I mean, you know, it's coming in. So I don't really, other than that, we know there's a different huge price tag. I don't really see the mechanism. Yeah, the any, other, that uh, other bit is really the important part. You could have a phenomenal snow event or ice event that mm -hmm. could, and you'd be able to overspend. Right. Oh, and wind. Yeah, we got to throw wind in there too. Yeah, thank you. And, and we, you know, we've had them in the past, but those are tens of thousands of dollars in the end. Um, not millions and millions is an order of magnitude different and that there there has to it can't just be well we just haven't had a snow and ice event that's been on the order of magnitude of millions of dollars but i think it's entirely possible that we will have we asked mascot where else they can help us um i'm talking with ron about that but he doesn't seem to feel that there's i think at the moment a need to get you know see and that's the problem there. that's exactly my problem that's exactly why i don't want to do a blank check that's it right in a nutshell well, we don't we, need the help who is he kidding yeah, well, that, we well, have lots of help coming in from them well I'm, what i'm thinking is you know the help that we have from them has been, has been offered right not asked no it's been asked okay so what I'm thinking is maybe they have, um, we don't say just a road, maybe there's part of the repair that they'd be willing to do that they, they have um, that's easy for them, like blacktop, right? If our highway department goes through and repairs these, these roads and we have certain roads ready, can you guys come in and blacktop them for well, us? 
they, that's why Waitley Road was the one that Ron um, asked them to do. 95%, if not more, is the gravel. And that's why getting the free gravel from them would yeah. be huge. Once this is all set, we were going to do the cheapest alternative in a way, which was to ask for mutual aid. But we can't do that okay. until this is all set. There is a cheaper alternative, and that's MassDOT doing okay. it without us paying for it. That's the cheaper alternative. The idea that our highway boss thinks that that is not desirable or, or necessary. What did you say? And I'm words? sorry that I'm misrepresenting because Ron definitely did. We, at, we sat in the vehicle together as we were going around and we spoke with DOT and we requested. They offered to help and we said, here is what we would like. Can you have a meeting with DOT? Like as a group? Um, if you'd want to post it, but I mean, maybe one of you could meet with DOT and Ron and I'll talk about it. I would like a list of, from Ron of like the top 10 roads candidates for DOT to fix. I'd like to go to DOT with flowers and chocolates. Yeah. And Something. On bended knee. We should we should set up more and more meetings because <laughs> every other alternative is. Um, uh, I mean, speaking of squeaky fiscally will, savage, I think yeah. that's where we should really make some noise. It, it is it's been great. They've been helping us, and we can tell them over and over again and praise them for it. We need more help. Can you please help us more? Set up a satellite. We'll offer them a free satellite office in town. <laughs> Subsidize their lunches at Baker's. Oh, no, seriously. Like, this is like, I, I um, so I, I agree with all of that, but still, in terms of this motion, I mean, like, if, if that doesn't happen, or if it's like the, the DOT is like, great, but we can't meet with you for two weeks, what happens in the next two weeks when? when um, like what happens in the next two weeks if if Ron runs out of money? You know, like if there's repairs that need to be made and we have not authorized emergency spending, then do we just say sorry, we're not going to repair this culvert? We're just going to ignore this road until we get money from the DOT. And is that acceptable to people? Well, I don't think money will be coming from DOT. We're hoping to or we're, right, we'll be money eventually yeah, from the from, state. From the state, yeah. As I see it, we have roads that are in desperate need of fixing to make them safe. Right. If we don't at least pass the declaration, I can't get the ball rolling for us to be able to do anything. <laughs> so and the declaration or if, if we do, if we do just pass the declaration without any contingency, without any monitoring language then uh, my concern is that that becomes the path of least resistance and it's just what the highway department chooses to do spend town money because we don't i i don't understand this not asking the state to do more i don't i don't, I don't no, agree the, de I don't. the declaration the declaration does not take away your authority as a select board to oversee everything yeah apparently um Still yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that, but um, but once you've already ag agreed to spend that money, then um, but you haven't you haven't put any numbers in here. All you're doing is giving the mechanism. To I mean, you, you said like we could like pass this with contingencies that yeah, you know, Ron can't spend the money unless we approve it, right? I mean, we could well, and every two weeks we approve his bills, and you can set it up with. Him that he has to come in and say, This is what the work is for. I mean, however, you want to do the controls, but we can't even get there unless we have. I mean, could we set it up in such a way that before he does the work, he has to come in and say, I want to spend, you know, X amount of money on gravel for this particular road? Does that, would that make you more comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. With prior approval of the town of Conway Select Board, I move that the board declare a state of emergency on July 10th. For the town of Conway, pursuant to guidance of the Division of Local Services of Massachusetts Department of Revenue and the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 31, in light of the recent flooding event. Under this emergency, the Highway Police, Fire, and Ambulance Departments to be assigned codes under which deficit spending, emergency spending may occur. May I put the 
comma there with prior authorization by the select prior authorization the by the select board. I second that motion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I move that the board, the board uh, excuse me, I move that the board declare a state of emergency on July 21st for the town of Conway pursuant to guidance from the Division of Local Services of the Massachusetts Department of Revenue and the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 31, in light of the recent flooding event. Under this emergency, the highway police, fire, and ambulance departments will be assigned codes under which deficit emergency spending may occur at the approval of the Conway Select Board. Prior to, prior to, excuse me. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I will definitely join a meeting with Dot. Um, I maybe Phil can do another meeting. Maybe Eric can do another meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should just offer our thanks and beg for more. <laughs> And have a list in hand of exactly of what we want. Yes. Because you're not going to get it unless you ask for it. It's thoroughly depressing. But at least it stopped raining. <laughs> it, this has become like Ireland. There's three kinds of weather. It's either raining right now, it just stopped raining, or it's about to start raining. Hey, I bet for a good 24 hours we had the largest town pool in all of Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, appoint eight election workers for the one year term. Are, are we done with or do, is there any other comments? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Point eight election workers for a one year term. Where are they? Right here. Kathleen Whitcomb, election warden. Deborah Craven, deputy election warden. Margaret Kennedy, election clerk. Kathy Lamas, deputy election clerk. Shell Harris, inspector. Claire Conklin, inspector. Phyllis Stacy, deputy inspector. And Dorothy Harris, deputy inspector. My only question about this is that I know that Claire Conklin is in New Zealand. I think for a semester, possibly a year. Is that Lori's looking into it? Okay. All right. Can I? <laughs> but, I mean, Lori's, um, um, yeah, pending the outcome of Lori's investigation of one elector not being in the country, right? Or one uh, volunteer not being in the country. Um, country right now, I move to appoint those uh, residents as election workers. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Um, Burkhardt appointments, my favorite. So of the six, two have already been appointed, one by planning and one by Board of Health. So there's four more to do. Yeah, I don't know how. What is the FCCIP? Uh, Franklin something something inspection program. It's the one that does oh, the proper inspection. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh. Something with transportation committee. Do does it have to be electric camera for all of these positions? Uh, it says on the sheet what they're coming. They're all select order appointed. Okay, so it doesn't have to be one of us. But I think it says on the sheets who it was last year. Oh, that was the sheet. Oh, yeah. It's uh, easier to just, just check a box saying his name is last year. Okay, do that. I think I've uh, like 20 attachments since then. <laughs> and uh, are we not? Is, is Amanda not being that emergency management director? I just had to fill it in. It's your appointments, but yes, she is the emergency management director, so we should put her down there. Yep.
Baker's team is that cooperative inspections program. You're yes. a canter. That's where you that's what you did last year. What? Yeah, your FCC I think. Obviously it was fine. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. And you were on the council too, right? Except they thought like the transportation. I like giving them the phone, my wrong phone number. Uh, <laughs> because the black me with the number I corrected it to the accurate one. Um, okay, all right. So we just kept them all as they were last year, except the EMD is now Amanda, not me. Um, set a date for the Conway Trading Post public hearing, August 28th. I'm sorry, that's for a liquor license. I yes. should have put that on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, my suggested date was the 20th. And you were sure that that can then be made to occur by oh, Chatsville the Hills, which is when they want to open by. Oh, um, I'm not sure that they were going to happen by that. It's still a goal. It's still the it's it's still a goal, but you still have to, there's still to be a lot of wins. Right? Like you know, we're thing. having people need to look at it to see how quick. Yeah. But it's, it's hard, you know, some people, first guy said, I can't get here probably till my time over in November because we've got so much on the plate. But the second guy is mulling it over. And we yeah, well, they don't need to be 100% ready. They can just be 90% ready. But, uh, um, that date works for me. Same. I mean, that's a regular select board meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, sorry, should we set that for like 5.30 just before the? Yeah. Sure. 5.45. 5.45. Because our, because our liquor licenses are so much in demand. Mm. <laughs> and that's one's going to be standard controversial. We got to remember reading that we're entitled to like six of them or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So. Okay. All right. Um, approve the fiscal year 24 members of the Mass and Motion Working Group. Um, so, you know, the, the recommendations um, of, of the mass in motion was that you have one member of each of these different committees. We have two members of Council of Aging One. They both want to be on it. Um, the recommendation that we're given is that you only need one. I'd be okay with only one. They do both want to be on there. So I'll just leave it at that. I, um, We've never really turned away people that wanted to be on committees before. Yeah, it's not really, it's not really something that needs to be done. Um, there is also one person that was the previous board of health rep who is now not on the board of health or on any of the requisite boards, and is just sort of a community member now. Is the qualification, which is not, it's not on the categories of people that need to be on it either but she also wants to stay on it so um we could just uh you know and, and there's also the thing of so this it, it's it's a one year the most that it could be on is is one year because our relationship changes every year with a different memorandum of understanding there's our annual that that governs this um so we could we could do it for one year. We could do it really for, for just, um, rather than having to redo it, you could just do it for, to, to serve at the pleasure of the select board with, with no end date. Yeah, because yeah. it's a working group. So yeah. it's slightly different. So I had um, down seven people. George, George was here. Um, that is Bennett, Tilda, Hunting, and Kathy Lamas, Rackwickies, <laughs> Pat Lynch, and you. It sounds like a good group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Don't we need somebody for the personnel committee still? <laughs> we do. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that. Great for that. Great for that. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> um. I, I have, I mean, even though they, what they recommend only one 
person that we had to yeah they bring and, and also the other the other what, what always sticks in my mind too is when um the uh, division of loan services that whatever i remember with the the programmer there that i went to they talked about how the data of perfect of, of, of the most efficient committee size is five um and, I, and my experience says that that's a really good number on a committee but, my experience but, says it's so hard to get people to sit yeah. on a committee that if we have two people willing yeah, like you're right i, I someone's going to be stuck i agree at some point <laughs> so Someone seven it is um, seven it is. So we can. So the motion would be to keep that uh, of those people that attended the last meeting, we would recommend that they all be made members for this fiscal year of the working or, group. Uh, of the working group or until that in the, in the, they serve at the pleasure of this event. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, items not in the debate 48 hours. Anybody? An administrator update. I read them. Yes, but not everybody sitting at home. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then thanks. Well, the two um we have a pre mitigation grant on Delaware Avenue as well as transfer station repairs that need to be done. I'm asking for extensions on both of those projects because of all the work the highway department is now doing and won't have time to finish. Um, we talked about the flooding event. Uh, the trash bag stickers did arrive and Adam has been very kindly making lots of envelopes ready for people when they come to get their car decals. Um, so we'll be rolling that out on September 1st. And Jan had a great idea of trying to See, I think she said you need to pay Mike to provide it for free of a little credit card reader so that when people come into the office, they can do it on a debit card or something. So, so she's looking at that actually that. at the transfer station. That would be. Mm -hmm. We thought about it, but there's no internet or anything up there. There's no way to do it up there. That's right. the problem. So yeah. we'll do it at the town offices. Um, and then we'd already talked about the Zero Off Ashfield Road Sustainability Committee met, which was really interesting given the recent events. Mm -hmm. And they seem like a great group. They're going to be trying to recruit their own two new members as well. Um, and they're going to come up with a list of priorities and a statement of purpose. And then it was just a personnel update. So that's that. <laughs> Um, select board member comment just um, Senator Ed Markey is going to be here in Conway on Wednesday. Um, my understanding is that he's going to want to tour uh, a damaged road, but one that he doesn't have to walk too much. Okay, I shouldn't say that. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's got to be convenient for all parties concerned. But uh, and you know, I'll Hopefully, he will announce some funding source that we haven't already applied for or don't know about. So, um, are we meeting at Natural Roots? Is that where? So, that is, uh, you know, I, I know that's where uh, that's where our local legislators recommended that he start his Conway experience at. Um, and it is a nice place to go to. My concern there is that uh, our needs are far greater than yeah. that one place, and that it would be nice to have a, a representative sample of, you know, more, than, more than that. More than that, I offered. I offered to show the senator my basement. <laughs> he was, his, staff, his staff. His staff didn't think very much of the idea. Um, I want to see that as a reporter. <laughs> I'm offered to show the center of my face. Yes, yes. Uh, um, yeah, and that's my other my other concern in all this is that the number of it is the, the private residences that that the number of people that are still just coming out of the woodworks that have really suffered and don't really have the ability to, to be able to take financially. Um, and very few people have that kind of money laying around. So 
I don't know how we're going to help them here, but it would like to really help people. And in the past, we have used, I'll just put this idea out there, we have used the Conway Town Trust um, after natural desert disasters. I remember that very large amount of money that we spent on one home rewiring it and getting it together. We spent like 80000 on somebody's home out of the Town Trust in the year. Um, and I think for, for something like that, we could probably help a lot of people. So I, I don't, but I don't know what else. I don't know what else. It just seems like every avenue is closed to private residents. And, um, so I don't know. Um, was there mail? No. All right. So the, could we want to have a discussion about the next, the executive session that's scheduled for tomorrow. And yeah, I'm, I'm not very keen on that timing of it. In consideration of everything that's going on right now, uh, it's just that that's been sent out as a legal letter. So, yeah, yeah I can rescind it. It's up to you guys. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I have the same concern as Chris, and I also um, have overbooked myself. First, I mean, I, I, I could make it tomorrow if I have to, but um, give it night. Like, yeah, the timing of <clears throat> when somebody is here. I don't want to push them, is all I'm saying. And I totally understand it should still, this session is still needed. It is still needed. The timing, I just don't think is ideal. Yeah, the timing is terrible. <laughs> Through no fault of anybody. Through no yeah, fault of exactly. anybody. I mean, it's nobody's fault. But that, it, I think it would be the honorable thing would be to postpone it until. Um, Indefinitely. Well, no, we need to schedule it. Uh, what about the 14th? That sounds like a good idea. I mean, we'll be here anyway. Um, I can check. There may be some vacation plans. But no, we wouldn't be on that day. We could do it at 5 30. Okay. I definitely cannot do anything on the 15th or 16th August. That's okay. So now this will be uh, uh, last time it required a separate letter being sent out, uh, put it together for you to be signed in the office. Sorry, I know it's a no, no, no. I just, I just, honestly, I'm just trying to think through the process. Same, same copy of same letter, just scratch exactly. out the date. Exactly. You don't got to sign it. Just, yeah. All right. All right. So move. <laughs> okay, so the 14th or 5 30. Yeah. So um, the next next regular meeting is August fourteenth, six p.m. here, and uh, we're to adjourn. Uh -huh. All in favor? Aye. Aye.